Well, we finally did it. I managed to get my hands on the HP Envy X2. We had to go out and buy this device since they're so hard to find. I've been using it for the last two weeks, and today, well, I'm gonna give you the definitive review of this device. Stay tuned. All right, before we get started, there's a lot to unpack with this device. So this video may be a little bit longer than usual, but I think you'll appreciate all the detail I give. We'll go through the hardware at first, which is very good and pretty impressive. Then we'll touch on Windows 10 on ARM, which is probably the most interesting aspect. And I'm gonna talk about why I like this device, basically. I used it for the last week at Microsoft Build while I was out in Seattle as my primary device. So here it is, the hardware for the HP Envy X2, and I don't wanna pull any punches here. This is a premium device. One of the best built tablets I've ever felt. And if you've been looking for an iPad Pro that runs Windows 10, well, this is the closest thing you're gonna to get to it. HP, in my opinion, did an outstanding job. It's an all metal design, unibody, very thin. It's about seven millimeters, about the thickness of a pencil, and should be about as thin as an iPhone. It's just really, really amazing. Very light too. Of course, you're going to probably use it in the case which comes with it most of the time, but it's still nice to be able to pull it out and just hold it like a regular tablet. Turn to the left side of the device, we find the single and solitary USB type C port that is used for charging, or you can use the included USB type A converter. There's also a little LED there to show it when it's charging. It is not Thunderbolt 3, don't forget that's an Intel technology. This is Qualcomm, so you won't have that feature, but you can put a peripheral up to this and connect a bunch of things to it. It seems to work pretty well, but Windows 10 and ARM is still a little tricky when it comes to some peripherals. Coming up on the upper side here, we do find the micro SD card, so you can put that in there for expansion. This device ships specifically with 120 gigabytes of internal storage, so you can easily expand that with this card, which is really nice. On the right-hand side, not a lot going on. You do have the SIM slot for the Nano SIM. Now, you can't throw anything in this, including Verizon, ATT, T-Mobile, whatever. Uh, I should point out, though, as of right now, AT&T and T-Mobile, I believe, still need to certify this device on their network. That doesn't mean a ton. I've been running this with the AT&T SIM in there and it runs just fine. But when you try to run the AT&T app, it will say it's not recognized. That is in the process now of getting approved, so that shouldn't be too big of a deal. We also find the volume keys here on the side and the Bang & Olufsen logo. Not a lot going on, but at the bottom here, we do also have a headphone jack. So it's kind of cool they put it at the bottom versus surface, which puts it at the top. I know a lot of people prefer down here, so there you go. All right, next to the shiny HP logo, we find a five megapixel rear-facing or world-facing camera. It's actually a very good camera. I'm not saying it's gonna blow away your iPhone or Android device. I'm saying it's probably where the Lumia 720 was, was a few years ago. It's, it's a lot better than you would expect. So if you do plan on using this to occasionally take photos, uh, you won't be terribly disappointed. It's still a tablet camera, I wanna keep that in perspective, but again, better than anticipated. You also have a microphone hole there and a couple more microphone holes on top. This does have a far field microphone array on there for Cortana. Turn to the front of the device, you do find the front facing camera, which is pretty solid. You also have Windows Hello facial recognition with an IR camera. Uh, you know, of all the Windows Hello systems I've used, this one's not the best. It works and it works about 90% of the time, but every once in a while I find it failing and it fails at a higher rate than I've used on any other device. It's not a big deal. I just find like they probably made some compromises here. I'd still rather have that though than say a fingerprint reader. So it's not terrible. Turn to the display itself. You're talking a 1920 by 1280 resolution. So basically full HD. It is a three by two aspect ratio and HP does do that for tablets and I'm very happy to see that here. It's probably one reason I really like this device. It's a very good display. Brightness goes pretty high. Uh, it doesn't have much glare to it as you can probably see here with my hand going in front of it. Flanking that great display are two speakers front facing as well. Same position as the Surface Pro. If I had to rate these speakers, I would say better than expected. Uh, HP has really sort of figured out how this stuff is supposed to work. These are very good speakers. Not a ton of bass, and you wouldn't expect that, but it's just very good audio, and I was kind of surprised by how good it is. Now, the bezels are a little bit thicker than I would like on this device, but then again, they do anticipate people using this as a tablet, so you're going to want to hold the device without accidentally touching the display, especially for presentations and business environment. So I kind of understand that, but I totally get if you're thinking you'd like to see just a little bit shaved off of that, I agree with you 100%. So let's talk about the included portfolio cover and keyboard. As you can see, it just snaps in here. Very strong magnets. They did a great job here in designing this. 
it clicks to the back, sticks to it, and you can use this flat or there are magnets and you can put it at an angle. Really nice design here. The back flips down on a hinge, really clever. And I know some people are looking at this and thinking, oh, that's a terrible design. And using this every day for the last two weeks, I actually really like this design. For one, you're protecting this device when you throw it in the bag. The back of this device is metal. It can easily scratch, but it'll always be protected. That hinge is very stiff. Now it's not as stiff as say the Surface Pro, but it works very well, including in the lap. I use this on the airplane exclusively. I use it at events and wherever I was, even a taxi cab, I had no problems using this device on my lap. I thought it worked very well. Turn to the keyboard itself. This is a really good keyboard, and what I mean by that, take the Surface Pro's design for its keyboard and combine it with what HP's been doing with it, say its Elite Book series, that's this keyboard. In fact, that's what HP told me they were going for, and they did a fantastic job. The travel is very good on this. It's very consistent on all the keys. It is backlit, it is manually controlled. I will say, on this device, running backlit all the time, it doesn't have the sensor drip turn on automatically, so you'll probably drain the battery quickly with it, So, but you just have the button here, turns it on and off. Very good travel though, one of my favorite keyboards. The material itself is a leather, so for people who don't like the Alcantara or worried about it getting dirty, HP has got you covered. They went with the more traditional blue leather, which I think looks really good. Turn to the trackpad, they still have their elongated weird trackpad, but I'm okay with that. I'd rather have more trackpad than less. Could you imagine if it was short like that, it would look kind of weird and just not be as good. And it's a very good trackpad, on par with the Surface Pros, and I'm happy to report it does use precision drivers, so HP is taking my advice, I like to think, and they put precision drivers in here. Just a really good trackpad. That's one of the reasons I like this device so much. All right, let's talk about the pen. It's included in the box along with the keyboard and the device. Always a nice touch. Uh, this is the familiar HP pen. It's not their brand new one that charges by USB Type-C, so you do have a single battery that goes on the inside. You have two buttons here as well. Now, this is using Intrig technology, so you could use your Surface Pen on here, or your if you have a Wacom Bamboo ink pen, and you can use that as well. I couldn't get out of HP what the pressure levels on this device were. My guess it's 2048. It could be up in the 4000 range. All I can say is it's a very good pen experience. It feels a lot like the Surface Pro 4 to me, so I'm very happy with it. Plus, it does have this cool little pen loop on board, which makes carrying this pen very easy. So a little bit more on the hardware options. This is the four gigabytes of RAM and 120 gigs of storage. There's supposed to be a 256 and eight gigabytes of RAM available later on. All right, so the processor, this is running a Qualcomm Snapdragon 835, which is found in many smartphones today. It's not as quite as good as the new 845. I actually expect news around Windows 10 and the Snapdragon 845 at Computex, so stay tuned for that. But this is actually a good processor for this device. And I wanna be very clear here. Let's talk about Windows 10 and ARM. So this is running full Windows 10. It comes with Windows 10 S, so that means it is locked to the store, but you can upgrade to Windows 10 Pro for free through the store as well. And I haven't done that yet. So if you're looking for me to talk about running Win32 apps, I'm gonna do that in a separate video because I think that's a super interesting topic. And it's been complicated by the fact that since I got this device, Microsoft has released in preview to developers the ability to recompile apps in X64 ARM. And that's kind of a game changer because it makes running apps a lot smoother and opens the doors up. However, it requires devs to recompile their apps. That's not a big deal. They don't even have to add any new code to the app. They can just literally hit a button and recompile it, put it into the store. But Microsoft knows devs. This stuff could take them six months to do. So what they have is the emulation layer that it can fall back to. But HP is very clear when I asked them about this. They expect people to be able to run native apps on this, that is UWP store apps, for the best experience. While you can run x86 and run the emulation layer, that's more of a fallback just in case. They are very excited about this SDK coming out because they said it is really gonna make Windows 10 on ARM shine, but we'll have to wait a few months to see that. All right, let's talk about the benefits of Windows 10 and ARM, and there are quite a few, but before I say this, I wanna get this out of the way. This device is meant for a very particular user. In fact, I think it's kind of meant for someone like me. That is, I need a light computing device that I can easily take with me on trips that allows me to, say, record in meetings, take notes, get all-day battery life, do email, do my stuff for the Windows Central website, communicate with people, use Skype. This is a light computing tablet device, and that's what this is meant for. If you're looking to game on this, if you're looking to make this your main everyday PC, you, 
you're probably going to be disappointed. And that's just being really honest here. And that's totally fine. Not everybody is looking for that. I wouldn't use this as my main PC. I have a desktop for that. But for when I travel, this served to be pretty awesome. Specifically, there are a couple of things I really liked about it. All day battery life. So there's a lot of hype around the new 22 hours of battery life that HP was claiming. They're not entirely wrong on that. This easily gets 10 hours of battery life, but pushes more around 15 hours. And that's real time usage. Even more in standby, it gets zero drainage. You can leave this for days and turn it back on and it'll just be there with full battery. And it is a liberating experience to be able to go through meetings and take this around with you all day and still have like 75% battery life. It's just super impressive. So those claims are totally legitimate. The other cool feature of course is instant on. So a lot of laptops running Intel systems have gotten better with this. In fact, the Surface Pro has a sort of more improved instant on. If you go watch my original review, I talk about that. Dell still doesn't do this for some reason. It has to do with the SD card and it resumes more quickly. That doesn't matter for this device. This device is basically always on just like your smartphone. Another cool feature that no one has really talked about is because this device is always on and in that standby state, hey, Cortana works all the time. That is, I can leave this device closed with the cover on and just go up to it and say, hey, Cortana, when's my next meeting? And it'll totally come on and the speakers work and I can hear it. It's an always on listening device. So it's sort of like having the invoke speaker just with you all the time, and it's really impressive. Along those same lines, because it's always on, Skype works better. If a Skype call comes in, it doesn't need to wake the device. It just turns on again like your smartphone. And that feature is super important for people who rely on Skype or any kind of VoIP communication. Likewise, when email comes in, you can get notifications all the time as well. So there's a lot of cool benefits to having a device that's just always on. And the other half of that is the always connected bit. So of course, as I mentioned earlier, this runs LTE and that is totally liberating. I love having devices with LTE on board. Now getting back to performance with that Snapdragon 835, everybody keeps asking what are the benchmarks, what does it feel like, is this just an Atom processor? I had no issues using this device for my everyday task, and that's a big deal. I never got frustrated when I launched an app or you know, something took a real long time. Sure, something like Slack, which is a recompiled app that's in the store, did take a little bit longer to initially launch, but once it was running, it was totally fine. Now, I'm not saying this is a blazing fast device. If you have a Core i7 laptop, that will be way fast. But for me, the issue is, is this frustrating to use? And the answer is no. Of course, I'm sticking to Windows 10 apps in the store, so that may be why. But there is still a lot of good performance here for the everyday user looking for a light computing tablet. Now, another cool feature you may have noticed is this has no fans on board as expected, neither does your smartphone. So yeah, there's no cooling on this device and it doesn't really get hot either. It's just been very nice to use. So that's a good benefit. It's great also having USB type C. So the charger that comes in the box is actually an okay charger. It's a three pronged AC one, which to me is weird. Cell phones don't use that. And in fact, I've used some Intel devices that don't use three prongs. So I'm a little disappointed in that, but it's a small charger. But the cool thing is this is USB Type-C, so you can use any USB Type-C charger with this. All right, so let's bring it all in. Now, this is a very expensive device. It costs $1,000, and I know a lot of people have been freaking out about that, but how HP sees it, and I'll leave it up to you whether or not you think it's justified, they're comparing this to the iPad Pro. Now, when you spec out the iPad Pro with the same feature set, well, when you do that and then throw in LTE, and you throw in the extra keyboard you actually have to buy with it, and you throw in the pencil, that device is $1,440. This is a thousand. Is four hundred and forty dollars worth it to you? I don't know. It's up to you. But that's how they're positioning this. That is, someone has a regular full PC and they need an iPad Pro and they're looking at that device. Well, this is a competitor to that. Now, you may not see it that way. You may be looking at this as your only PC you're going to buy, in which case I don't think that analogy holds up, but I kind of agree with how HP is seeing this device. I've been wanting an iPad Pro-like device that runs Windows 10 for years, and this is pretty damn close to it. This is really nice hardware. It's so premium. It's way better than you expect. The audio is good. The cameras are good. The keyboard experience is great. Excellent trackpad on there, and it comes with a great pen in the box. It's got LTE. This has all the stuff I want. Now, 
And when it comes to running full Win32 apps and your favorite games from Steam, this is not your device. And that is one area where this does fall. The iPad Pro is very good at gaming. This is not. Do not buy this if you expect to play games on it. Sure, you can do Candy Crush and some light arcade stuff on here, but overall it's going to fail when it comes to anything larger. And that's still a limitation of this platform for right now. So I should also point out that there is an Intel version coming out of this device later this summer. So that's going to run an Intel Core M processor. So it's still not quite a Core i processor, but it'll be much more powerful than this. And I think that's a given. But there are compromises with that device too. It is going to be thicker, at least a millimeter thicker, which is not crazy, but it is a larger device. Battery life will probably be about half of what this device is, and you won't get that instant on feature. It will have an LTE option though that is available. I'm unclear about the pricing. I've asked HP for clarification, but my guess is, being an Intel system, that will be a few hundred dollars more expensive than this, but we'll have to wait and see there. But if you're looking for a light computing tablet that allows you to go anywhere and do things like work in Microsoft Office, Office, use the web, use email, and do all that on the go with ease, this is a pretty cool device. Don't forget, there's a lot of stuff you can't do on the iPad Pro. For instance, you don't have a right click, you have a lot fewer menu options. It's just not quite as good of a productive device as this is. The iPad Pro makes an excellent tablet, but it's a poor PC. This is a pretty good PC that makes also a very good tablet. It's not as quite as strong as a regular PC, and that's where the compromise is gonna be, but this is for a lot of people, especially you Windows Phone fans, the best of both worlds. All right, so that's my review of the HP Envy X2 with Windows 10 on ARM. Now, we'll be doing a lot more content on this, including taking a look at running actual Win32 apps on there and what it's like, so stay tuned for that. Now, if I didn't answer all your questions, that's okay, I'm not perfect. Leave me a comment below, ask them there, and I'll see about doing a follow-up video where I'll try to go through those. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, and as always, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, take care, everybody.